So my name is Dylan Berry, and I'm here representing Dyne Audio, and we're going to have a little talk here uh, about the music industry and how to break into the music industry. Uh, we have platinum producer Warren Curtis from Dowdy Music here. Uh, he's uh, been involved with many, many, many artists, a few that you might know, uh, Neo, French Montana, Janelle Monet. You just did a song, Jan Janelle Monet, Do My Thing? Oh, that, that's not uh, recently, but we're actually working on a new song right now for her. But uh, my thing is uh, a while back, and it's uh, a song feature style. You know, the, she had the crazy uh, it with uh, yeah. Kanye West, remember? Yep. So, We're going to get into yeah. that in just one second. I want to introduce Gen uh, Jennifer Ackerman or Ackerman. 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 Got that. It's like some Lord of the Rings kind of <laughs> pronunciation. I'll get it's it. Easy. It's Walk Swedish. Man. Yeah, it's easy. I'm obviously not Swedish, but I try. That's all right. That's all right. Um, and Jennifer is from Final Child and one of the independent artists that played here earlier today. Um, you know, so, so it's a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. So, fun. so I wanted to have a rounded perspective on you know, how to break into the music industry. Obviously, you work with artists all the time on, on every level. Mm -hmm. These days, everybody's on the highest level. Um, tell us a little bit about you and, and your partners with Teddy Riley, right? Oh, yeah, one of my business partners is actually Teddy Riley. Uh -huh. um, we've been working for a very long time together on, on different projects. And then, but my actual partner is um, Ty. Um, mm -hmm. we out of music together so that's a production do production team and, you know we we produce for some of the people that you named and now we're actually in 2020 expanding i mean produce a uh, staying producer but also becoming a dj like you know daft punk chain smokers type oh, of cool type of feel so that's where we are that's where we're going for 2020 we have a uh, uh, some collabs coming out this year um one is uh, with a very big dj and, uh, we have a few songs with him, so it's going to be a cool can, little can ride. Can you tell us who the DJ is? Yes, it's uh, Hugh Gale. He's, he had a number one hit in Europe uh, last year. And, um, you know, he's doing really well right now. And we have a few collaborations with him coming out. So it's a, it's a good thing. So, so talking about this, and this is kind of an, a normal theme for the new music industry. Um, you can't just do one thing anymore, right? Mm -hmm. You've got multiple businesses now. You're, you're transitioning, being a producer and successful at that, into these other verticals. Jennifer, you've done a few different things. Mm -hmm. You've you've modeled. You are. Uh, do you act? Um, not really. I never really wanted to pursue acting because it seems like a freaking hell. It's harder than being a musician, if and that's saying something. <laughs> I think so because with music, you can like any day if you want to, you can go into a studio. You can just write a song. As an actor, like having my sister and my fiance actors, it's just. The frustration but not being able to do what you like to do or love to do is just really hard and I don't think I could do that. So looking at the music industry and, and the different things that you can do, can we talk about a couple of the different ways that you can be heard as an emerging artist? Because I think that's the hardest thing is getting from here over the hump mm -hmm. of yeah. being exposed and being able to book shows. and Yeah, so we, we were talking about it with Jennifer earlier, a good way to do it, you know, like, I think she, she told me earlier that she has a song on the very famous show, You, mm -hmm. you know, like, so it's like uh, licensing, placing songs on, uh, on you know, uh, TV series or movies, that, that's a good way to create visibility, uh, you know, for yourself as an artist or independent artist, if it's, like you say, you know, it's not easy mm -hmm. to break in and uh, as far as for myself you know um having produced for all these people is a good thing but you know doing a collaboration with a big dj is definitely also a good way to um, you know uh create visibility you know for the artist project you know to to have a, a feature with so somebody that's well known that's a, another route there, there's so many ways uh, you just got to be creative with it and, and i've yeah. seen that I, I own a company called smash house and i'm a, a composer and done a lot of film and tv stuff for for many years and one of the things that we did that <clears throat> you know not not every sync's going to get you the exposure no. that you want it's like you know you might get a sync on a big show but if it's not a featured sync it's not placed in the right way it may not but w we did one for ufc uh, aldo versus mcgregor which mm. was a very short fight but um and we brought a group called von gray it was from imagine dragons camp four sisters and we used it's just kind of an interesting way to, to to shed light on how to break an artist we took the gig that i had and i had to hire a vocalist i just contacted them and said look this is an opportunity to get exposure we did the promo, which was literally one little tag at the end. It was like, behind your eyes, right? And we turned it back into a full song. We pitched it back to UFC, 
they created a fan video and let people have the stems and all of these fans of UFC that do these bootleg edits did edits to the song and everything. Mm. And we, we got picked up on 186 cool. radio stations that's across amazing. the nation. And that's a, a good example. Uh, and then there's many other things that just f- fall flat. I guess Under Mifflin, I worked there. I worked there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like social media, the hashtags, uh, the challenge, you know, what we do. Very, like, like I said, there's so many ways. So many ways to, to be creative, to try to create, like, uh, I think actually I was talking to Hugo uh, earlier, the DJ, and um, he sent me a song, that Roxanne song, I think, is number one now on the radio. Mm. The, no, we, we, we did it without any label, you know, any major label. Yeah. So. I believe in just always keep going um, and just kind of, yeah, just keep going. I mean, I wouldn't have had that song on you if it wasn't from just keeping going for many years and exactly. meeting Never someone and meeting someone and then, you know, life goes for s- full circle when it's meant to be and you just kind of keep it up because, well, you know. And, and the preparation plan, right? Everybody's like, I want to sync to break my record. Yeah, you yeah. get one, then what? If you don't have some sort of follow-up plan, marketing plan, promote yourself plan, reach back out to the music supervisor that licensed right, your song right. on social media plan hustle the fact that you did it it doesn't continue to have an energy right it yeah get kind of yeah. Like yeah um so question for you what what sort of things are you doing um to not do like this <laughs> no well just just to, <laughs> you, you, it's a content machine right you, you right. almost have to be a broadcaster a public personality yeah well i think know. like i started getting like frustrated about maybe five years ago and i just kind of told myself i'm just gonna i'm just gonna do it so i just started like making my own art making my own videos producing my own music just pulling the contacts that i had and and it's kind of worked for me i've, I've always been good at being my own boss um, and uh, and I like being independent. Obviously, I would love to in the future have a great team and have a great label. But as long as it's not right, I don't want to push anything. And um, yeah, I just I just believe in keep going. And the more music I write, um, the better they get. And you know, the more shit I go through, the better the music gets. So like, just never stop making, never stop creating is my always advice. And and don't I, I say don't don't make excuses. You know, don't lean on the fact, well, they kind of did that, so I should be able to get exactly, by with that. Exactly, you know. Because the reality is you don't really know how hard yeah. people work to do what they're exactly. doing. Exactly. Everybody's paths is different. You know. Everybody is going to end up somewhere in, in a different way. But, um, yeah, and always just try to meet new people, collaborate with new people, you know, take chances, take risks, and and uh, get inspired by, by different cultures and people is, is a great um, thing as well, I think. So, question I get a lot is how can new artists meet the right producer, preferably somebody at your level that can fast track track them. How do you receive new talent? Like, like me, how, how do I see new artists? Or like- what, what is the most common way that new talent is inroaded to you? I think it's easy to share on social media, like on Instagram, for example, like, um, or somebody I know say, hey, uh, you should check this person out, and then they just share their profile, and I listen, you know, but... It depends. Sometimes they'll be contacting me and, um, you know, sending me um, direct messages, check me out, or send me an email, or, you know, it could be Instagram, Facebook, anywhere. Like, even- Okay, breaking into the biz as a producer, how did you get from not being heard to being heard? Oh, my God, that's a long story. But um, I started in France, uh, then I came to U.S., and I didn't really know anybody. I wanted to do a singing career, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, but... When I got here with my accent, it was just not going to cut it. So I met my business partner and he said, you know what? You should probably focus on the producing um, part. So I... You said it like that or you just yeah, said, dude, no, you should probably just focus right, on Right. No, no. No, he said like, you know, my voice was good, but the accent, it, it was just not possible. So um, if I was going to do a career in the U.S. So he said, you know what? Just do the production. And so um, I bought my, my studio equipment and then we, uh, we made a company and... So we got, it. and the the funny part is that um, the first uh, placement, you know, I uh, it was at the MySpace time, mm. and I um, I sent a message to one of the famous rapper on MySpace, 
And uh, he freaking responded to me. So he said, hey, um, so I, I, t- I told the story. I'm in the U.S., a French producer in the U.S. Like, and he said, hey, send, you, send the tracks. So I, um, I sent him the tracks. Who and is this producer? Because we got to give him no, a nod of respect. No, no, no it's not a pr- uh, producer. He's a, a famous rapper in France. Oh, gotcha. His name is Rof. He's like uh, the equivalent of uh, Jay-Z in France. Like, wow. And like, he actually read no, your... He, oh. Yeah, he, on MySpace, he replied. You know you just doomed like every rapper to having another 100,000 posts a day sent to him. DMs. Yeah. You just and, did that. But that was years ago in my space. I don't know. I got lucky. He sent me his email. I sent um, tracks. And I ended up with, uh, we and me and my partner ended up with seven tracks on the album. And it went gold. Wow. That's how I got started. And then I got a few more placements. in France. Yeah, that, that oh, was so you're was one cool. of those producers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, the lucky yeah, ones. The ones that just like, oh yeah, I just sent him a DM and then I got to go. Well, I started the company in 2000. Uh, I got in the US in 2005, and the first placement was in 2010. So it took uh, gotcha. five years too. So you did some top ramen start yeah. the time. Okay, good. And and I like and, you again. and then after that. Um, uh, that success over in France, um, you know, we attended some beat battles in, uh, in America, mm-hmm. in New York, LA. We actually won some beat battles, and then that's when we started to connect with uh, different A and Rs, um, and and that's when I I got the chance after to um, collaborate and and do music for uh, more uh, I mean famous people in America. So like that that's how it kind of happened. So so naturally, when you started your first studio and you bought all Dyn Audio speakers, yes, um, and then moved on to doing True. all of these hit records because of the speakers, right? Well, to to be to be honest, I I still have you know I um, when I first bought my studio, I had the BM five uh, first series A series or so, and I still have them today, and they sound amazing. So. I mean, I I actually didn't even know about these speakers, and somebody was selling a pair of them, and and I bought them because I just needed some. <laughs> but they weren't cheap. But then they said, "Oh, they're really good. They're Danish." I'm like, "Well, all right." You know? It's like it's like somebody yeah, saying, "What's well, Nordic style couch?" I'm like, "Well, I'll pay the extra, you know, whatever for it." They're so crisp. Yeah, and I got it, and and they're amazing. I I, I rocked those for many 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 years. Um, the importance of sound. I mean, it, it's got to be good. It's got to be clear. You know, I know I'm selling the product right now, but I'm I'm only here because I like this stuff. They're amazing and, speakers. Yeah, and 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 they work. When when you're working with music, uh, it's important that you hear it properly to make it sound proper, yeah, right? Absolutely. Okay, good. Moving on. I'm out. I'm out. That's all I got. I got no more material. Okay. Warren Curtis, Dottie Music, Platinum Producer, French Montana, Neo, Janelle Monet. Who else have you worked with? Uh, Snoop, uh, Boyz II Men, uh, Sean Kingston, uh, um, potentially Normani soon, and then like uh, Stevie Wonder on March. So that's... And f- <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we talked about this. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, we're, gonna, yeah. we're gonna do some collab, and uh, I know there's other names uh, I'm forgetting, but it's it's. Uh, I mean, it's a blessing for me. You know, like I was in France, I came, you know, I didn't know nobody, and I uh, I watched some of these artists on TV when I was still over there, and you know, I came here, and you know, and now I'm like working with people like Teddy Riley and things like that. So it's it's just a blessing, and I keep on grow- growing um, every day. I want to learn more. I want to renew myself all the time and and keep pushing that's what we're doing the dj thing now so so it's a, it's a blast I, I love i love music you know yeah music is great so jennifer in in your experience starting a new project mm-hmm. final child what what has been your process and and what have you found along the way that has actually tracked for you in other words the traction has kicked in and um well i played it in bands for a long time because uh, I didn't really know what I was doing when I came out here. I was just a 19-year-old Swedish girl with a fake ID, and I just had so a was blast. I. And, I'm- you know, started a rock band with this British guy who lied about his age. And <laughs> Anyway, we you played a House of Blues and Viper a lot, and it was a lot of fun. I didn't even know what I was doing. You know, he kind of taught me to write, and then I met another Swedish guy, and we started writing a lot together and did a lot of sync. That's kind of how I got into that whole thing. And we did a lot for MTV and different Nordstrom and then we did on Netflix and it's really great sync guys but I just wanted a project that was kind of just for me you know after doing a lot of sessions with people and being in bands I never was writing music for myself or from myself and I ended up feeling quite empty and I'm like shouldn't I just write something for me then you know that's true and then I did that and it was really really um 
awesome. And it was just opened up a whole new sort of like writing uh, perspective for me. And it was just, it was really cool. If people haven't seen or heard Final Child, you should check it out. She has an amazing voice, total vibe. You rock Thanks. really hard. I, I like the fact that you have pop elements, but it, it, you also hit it. Right. Well, I, I mean, like, you know, I always wish that I was like a hairy man who could be in a rock band, but I'm there's not. still time. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. time. I guess I could take some steroids and shit, but but I um I always wish that I could like be the front man in a in a rock band, but uh, but I'm a girl and I do my best with what I have and and what I know and I I spend hours in studio by myself. Um, I have one at home, so I um yeah, I love the rock elements. It's like it's my favorite, but I like pop too. I like things that are catchy, I guess, and I like good songs like we all do. So uh, I try to mix a bit of everything. I try not to think too much when I write as well. I just try to like write something and whatever I like, or start with a beat, start with a guitar, and it's kind of it kind of varies. But I think you um, just have to do what's authentic to yourself. Yeah, a lot of people are, are, you know, they're influenced by everything around them. They see other success, they try to emulate it. Yeah, I don't think that ever really works. I think when you find what's really inside yourself, you're still going to be influenced by what you see and the success right. and all the rest of stuff. But if you if you're honest to yourself, people will believe you. Right, but it, it takes maturity. It takes time to get there. Yeah, right. Totally. But you see it. I mean, you can see some artists come in even at the highest level, and they're hiding from the fact that they're pretending. Mm-hmm. Some come in and they're just it. Like <laughs> they're just, you're just like okay, you know, just as soon as they open their their mouth and sing or or anything, they carry themselves authentically. Right. I think that's. But then you so don't important. know their past. I mean, it's really cool. I think when an artist has a past and they are writing their own songs, um, you can tell in a different way. I think yeah. when they sing them. So. In, in wrapping up a couple of different points that we have here on ways to sort of break into the music industry, because that's what the panel's kind of about, not break in, but break through and, and find an uh, audience. Social media is helpful. You can connect with people. They might actually listen, right? Mm-hmm. That's one takeaway. The other is you have to create steady content. Mm-hmm. The other is you have to be authentic, and uh, to tell a story and to tell a story and what was what was the other oh and syncs syncs is, yeah. is a good way but you have to have a follow-up plan getting a sync yeah. is sync isn't enough a sync you know in other words for people that and if you don't know and you're at nam then i'm surprised well, but if you don't know what a sync is it's yeah. getting a license to film and television right That's a good, is, but it's not yeah. easy either actually i mean oh it's so easy. No, nothing <laughs> no, nothing is easy but <laughs> easy. Say in licensing, if you place as an independent artist like um but like for example to do my thing got um, song with Gina Monet and Estelle, like it got licensed automatically until today. Like it, it gets licensed all the time. So, so that's also a good way if you never neglect uh, any sorts of placement because you never really know, you know, what can happen with the song. I've done a ton of stuff, and honestly, like one of the more of the crappy films I've done, like the Bulletproof Monk. Right. Right. Chow Young Fat film from 20 years ago. This thing still airs all the time. Wow. Whereas, like, you know, American Idol, Be Cool, these bigger projects, gone, you know, up one day, gone the next. Mm. So the residuals aren't there. So that's another thing people don't realize on the licensing front. Like History Channel, you know, hours and hours, they'll, it'll re-air and re-air and re-air because it's history. But, you know, if it's Flavor of the Month, it's there and then gone. Mm-hmm. Award shows, there and then mm-hmm. gone. Nobody cares a minute. So anyway, thank you for being a part of the panel. Absolutely. And, thank you. Uh, thank you and that's, all we, that's all we got for you today. Over and out. Thank you.